we see that in the third national conference of the HCA in 1917, a similar position to Philip Cohen is formally proposed to the conference. And this proposal is given by Mark John Levy, who he was a Jewish minister of the Protestant Episcopal Church of the United States, and he was the general secretary at the founding conference of the HCAA. But he argued that Jewish believers have a right to, quote, exercise their Jewish national loyalty, unquote, by observing, and he thought this was done by observing circumcision, Shabbat, kosher, and Jewish feasts. Most controversially, he argued that Jewish believers who insist that new followers of Yeshua abandon their Jewish heritage are committing, quote, an act of unparalleled disloyalty to their race, unquote. So after he presented his paper proposing Messianic Judaism, proposing an affinity for Torah observance, he motioned that the HCAA formulate an official stance on this issue. So the HCAA, during this meeting in 1917, held a vote, and the resolution proposed by Levy was promptly defeated. So according to the conference minutes found in the Hebrew Christian Alliance Quarterly, only Mark John Levy and, quote, one lady voted in favor of Levy's proposal. Then, in the same issue of the Quarterly, the HCAA articulated their official stance concerning Messianic Judaism. And they said this, we felt it our duty to make it clear that we have nothing to do with this so-called messianic judaism in any shape or form nor have we any faith in it we are filled with deep gratitude to god for the guidance of the holy spirit in enabling the conference to effectively banish it from our midst and now the hebrew christian alliance has put herself on record to be absolutely free from it now and forever yeah, so this was a very definitive statement made by the HCAA, to yeah. say the least. One, one which was made by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this statement, as guided by the Holy Spirit, stood for only 60 years. <laughs> so in 1975, not only did the HCAA deem Messianic Judaism a preferred position, but they officially changed the name to the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America, mm -hmm. as we've been discussing this whole show. And so this name change was largely accomplished by the younger members of the HCAA, who, in the wake of the Holocaust, the establishment of the nation of Israel, and Jerusalem returning to Jewish hands in the Six-Day War of 1967, were very passionate about their Jewish identity and worshiping Yeshua in a Jewish way. So they accomplished this by proposing and voting through this change in the midst of a lot of drama with only a few supporters from the members of the older generation in the HCAA. But this name change marked a dramatic evolution in the organization. And the dramatic turn that this name change symbolized was noticed by people at the meeting at the time and scholars who were studying it very soon after. So one of these scholars is Dr. David Rausch. He is a Christian scholar writing not long after these events were happening. He said, quote, the name change, however, signified far more than a semantical expression. It represented an evolution in the thought processes and religious and philosophical outlook toward a more fervent expression of Jewish identity. And then found in Rausch, who's quoting Daniel Jester from an interview in 1979, so just a few years later. Daniel Jester says, the Hebrew Christian would be a person who sees himself coming from Jewish ethnic origin and may desire to maintain the identity of himself that he has a Hebrew origin, but at the same time, the Hebrew Christian sees himself having come into the new covenant. The old covenant has passed away. So the direct practice of anything Jewish is contrary to his being part of the new people of God and the body of Christ. The Messianic Jew, on the other hand, holds that the Jew is still called by God. It's not a legalistic thing, but it's a biblical calling to maintain his heritage and practice consistent with extolling fulfillment in Yeshua. So Jester actually provides a really good summary of Philip Cohen's, Mark John Levy's view of Messianic Judaism, and David Barron's and the HCAA's view of Messianic Judaism and Hebrew Christianity. 
And then another example of somebody who was there at the event is Johanna Chernoff. And she says, quote, this proposed name change became the focal issue that represented the differences between the two groups. The old guard Hebrew Christians continued to define their faith as a Jewish flavored Christianity. They operated from within the church. They accommodated the church and they ultimately assimilated. The new guard Messianic Jews saw their faith as true biblical Judaism, centered around Yeshua as the Messiah and wanted to stand on their own two feet and be as Jewish as the Lord led them to be. So essentially, in short, Hebrew Christians are, as Dr. David Rausch puts it, completely assimilated and church acculturated Jewish converts to Christianity, unquote, which is contrary to the values of Messianic Jews and Messianic Judaism. Messianic Judaism involves Torah observance. This describes a very large number of Jewish believers today, and it describes those who proposed the name change in the 70s, and it describes those who defined the term originally in the early 1900s. And so at the beginning, you know, we offered how we used to think that Messianic Jew just meant any Jewish follower of Yeshua. What I hope has become clear is that the purpose in sharing the history of the term and the history of the MJA is that the difference between Jewish believers who go to church and Jewish believers who go to Messianic synagogue and live a Jewish life as a matter of covenant calling or national identity is too fundamental of a difference to call them the same things.